what you're looking at, you're looking at a universal rotisserie. Now this is kind of a little bit of a high-tech one. It's got a little bit more adjustment and play in it to fine-tune the vehicle that you're going to put on the car than your average rotisseries, but they all hook up the same. So let's go over the uh, rotisserie and see what we got before we go any further. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So your rotisserie should have a front and a back leg, or should I say a setup. And this is your setup right here. Now it's going to consist of a hydraulic pump, which is right here. And then it's going to have two arms that come out. And there's one right there, and the other one's over. There it is right there. And then on the arms, they should be adjustable. Just like what you're looking at here. These are, you can move them in and out and it basically adjusts to where you're going to mount your vehicle onto the rotisserie. Um, on this particular rotisserie we got adjustments right here which once it jacks up then what you would do is you would put a bolt inside it or under it to hold it in place and then of course the uh, T-bar, I call this a T-bar, that's actually adjustable too as you can see right there. Now what this does, this all threaded screw, what this does is once you get it mounted and then you get it jacked up to where you want it, this will actually fine tune it and it will lift this section of it up from the weight of this deal right here. So when you screw this in, it actually lifts it up. And then of course um, you would go ahead and bolt it all back down once you get it to where you want it. Um, these are our adjuster screws, uh, bolts and nuts right here. This is a lock nut and then you got this other safety lock and what that does, that locks this in place so when you're flipping your car one way or the other and you'll see that once we get to that point, once you get that, that'll lock it in place so your car will stay exactly where you want it as you're working on it. What the real deal is, is every car that you mount is going to be mounted different. And on most universal uh, um, rotisseries, you got to make your own bracket system that will slide on to our uh, adjustable arms here. They'll slide on there, and you got to make your own bracket system that fits onto the vehicle. And I'm going to show you that to make this all work. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure where we're going to mount this car that's going to be real stable and solid and the best place to do it at is where your rear bumper bolts onto the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and work on the back first then we'll hop up to the front. One other thing I want to mention is this is a unibody car and we do have some of the car torn down uh, for major rust repair so always remember that uh, you have to be very very cautious and aware when you're hooking one of these to this. I got some quarter inch or three eighths inch plate steel and I measured it out 10 inches and then in this area right here this is where our uh, the original bumper will bolt so what I'll do 
is I will bolt this plate to the car just like this, just like you're looking at. And then once that's bolted in, I will go ahead and take my two and a half inch stock, which is another three eighths inch thick, and it's two inches in diameter that will allow this piece of pipe to slide into it. And I will weld that to this plate, and then I will bolt that to our uh, adjustable arm right here. So as I'm looking at it, I don't even know if this is going to work on here because what we got is this piece right here. What I'm going to have to do is I will make a plate that actually fits in between. And this is the problems that you run into. So I'm going to take this plate here and I'm going to cut it off right there. And then that will actually fit in between here. And then what I can do, once I bolt that on, I'll weld this to that, weld it back on there. So it ain't sitting all cockeyed like that right there. See, this isn't even long enough for that, so if I bring that down to where it's supposed to be, then the plate's all sitting funky. And yeah, you kind of get the idea. All right, what I did here is I went ahead and cut the plate down to the size I needed. Then I went ahead and drilled my four holes out to bolt it to uh, the bumper bracket uh, fixture of the vehicle. That would be where your bumper bolts right here. And then I went ahead and took the leftover and you can see how I laid it on top of it and then I welded it back on. So we got a nice solid plate now that we can mount our um, rotisserie to and hopefully be safe and secure. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move our uh, rotisserie into place. And you want this arm to be in the center of the car. That's very important. So you want to get that as close as possible to the center as you can. And then what we're going to do is kind of give us a little room here, because I ain't got no room to work. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hate this shit. I can't breathe when I am boxed in by junk. All right, make sure, once again, that your rotisserie, the center of your rotisserie, is right into the center of the car. Now, we can go ahead and swing our movable arms out to where they go. And the place that we're gonna put them is right here on that plate. So we need to move that right there. And it looks like we can actually go this way with our rotisserie just to there. And then that should be the center. Right. Just like that. Let's get that up into the center where we need it. All right, right there. Now, what we need to do is we need to connect our um, adjustable arm here to that plate. And how are we going to do that? I'm going to tell you how we're going to do that. We got some two inch inside diameter square tubing that we are going to cut to fit on here and then we will bolt that to our arm. Um, let's go take a look at that and see what we got. So if you look right here, here is our two and a half inch outside diameter, two inch inside diameter square. Uh, what would that be? Three sixteenths probably, quarter inch. I don't think that's quarter inch, it might be, it might be quarter inch, but uh, you got to have the heavy duty stuff, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut that down, we're going to blow a couple holes in it to bolt it on there, and then we will weld this to those brackets, and the back end will be hooked up. Now that we have our two and a half inch square tubing cut and mounted, uh, you can see that... Uh, I cut approximately a 12 inch piece, 13 inch piece there. I lined it up, on, I set it up on top, I lined it up with the holes that I wanted and then I took my plasma cutter and blew some holes out in it. And this is a situation you have every time, unless you do the exact same car all the time, you have to make brand new mounting brackets for every car that you do. Um, so when I get done with this setup here, this, this thing here and this plate, when I get done with it, um, I'll hold on to it for a little while, but if I never use it, I will throw it in the trash because 
I mean, it's not good for anything else but this particular uh, body style car. So, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to slide it into the uh, 3 8 plate steel and then we will weld our square tubing and you can see how thick wall that is, that's very important. And it's also important that this diameter here is the same diameter as the outside of this tube here. Because you want that to be a nice tight fit, you don't want it slopping around, very important. So we're going to go ahead and take our machine and then we'll get it where we want it, just like that. And I can see that this is not centered off. So we're going to give it a little tug, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and jack it up to where it's right in the middle of that plate on each one. And another thing is we're going to make sure that this is in the center of the car. Remember this, this is very important. This section here has to be running directly down the center of the car. If you have it over one side or the other, and we're talking just a couple inches, when you tilt that car, it could make the whole thing tip over. So, the closer you get to the center, the better off you're going to be. I'll go ahead and get this one here where I want it. I'm going to put this one right here. It looks like it's just right. And then we're going to go ahead and weld this together. Now, one more thing um, before I start welding this. When you are welding this, you want to use 035 wire. This is very thick steel. You want penetration to be very, very good and strong. And you want to make sure that everything is going to work proper. So it's very important that you use 035 wire, not 023 or 030. 035 is what you want to use. just went ahead and hooked the back half of our rotisserie to the car. Now, before we do anything else, we need to go ahead and hook the front up. Now, we got a section of tubing and pipe that goes from this uh, situation here all the way up to the front that goes under the car. We won't hook that up until after we actually hook the front up. This was actually the easy part. And when I say easy part, it's because all I had to do is take some plate steel, make a bracket, and then weld my uh, machine to the car. But you can kind of understand why this arm is here. Because this is where you start making all your universal mounting brackets to bolt on to this arm right here. Now I'll tighten all this down, I'll get it all secure, but before I do anything else, I want to go up to the front and I want to get all that mounted. Now, the front end of this car is actually missing. You can see it up there against the wall. That is the aprons and the core support that actually go onto this car. Now I had to remove that, and that's not the original one. The original one was rotted and rusted. That's actually off a parts car that I took off a parts car, and I'm going to use that one for this car. But before we put that back on, I want to go ahead and mount my uh, rotisserie machine to the car because we can do all that later. We can put that on later. We can finish the firewall later. You can already see where I did rust repair on this firewall section right here. I had to replace that whole section. You see where there's some rust over here, um, there's a hole right there, and there, there's another hole down here that we got to fix. So we can do that later because what I'm, my main concern is right now 
is to get up under the car so I can fix all this rot and rust to get all these corded, to get these two uh, rocker panels and the floor system back in the car. We also got rust inside the fender wells and to do this is a very big nightmare. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 2x4 square tubing and I'm going to mount a bracket right here. And then what I'll do is I'll take my 2.5 inch square tubing that slides onto this arm and I will ride it up right next to it and I will go ahead or I'll put it on the top of it, one of the two, I'll put it on the top or on the bottom or somewhere and then what I'll do is I'll weld those two pieces together and then once that is mounted and secure I will take some 2x2 two two angle and I will go, I'll make a brace that goes from here up to the top of the lip right here on both sides and then I'll make a brace system in here that will hold these frame structures so they don't bend and twist. And in the main, and in the same time, it will hold our firewall and keep our car from twisting and bending as we lift it up in the air. Because once again, look what I said I had. All right, this is a unibody car, and the inner fenders and the core support are not on the car holding all this together. So we got to brace that up somehow, some way to uh, keep it all squared up and in line. Okay, uh, we're finishing up our rotisserie job here. Now what I did, I've jacked the back end of this up and you can see how the, um, the pop bottle jack here has raised up the back of the car and it's lined me up with this hole right here. So what I'll do is I'll take this bolt right here and this is what's going to hold this car in place. Now, once again, this is kind of a high-tech one. It's got this adjustable action here, but uh, we already got this all the way adjusted up. Now, what this does, this will actually lift the car up even higher to a higher position when you use this right here, and then you line it up with this. Um, I can see where this is coming off right here, Minnie. We've got to get that back in there. Uh, of course, these were loose. Those shouldn't have been loose. But... Uh, so I'm going to tighten this bolt up right here, and then we'll just hand tighten that. Now the back is already jacked up all the way. Uh, let's go over to the front of the machine. We'll do the same thing on the front. We'll get it all jacked up, and then we got to get this back in. That kind of slid out because these bolts were loose. See where that's lined up here? Yeah. It should be under there. Look at this. Let's hope that doesn't fall out. Now before we go any further, I want to let you know you can see I have removed all the front suspension. And if you look right here, all the rear suspension has now been removed out of the car. Once again, you can do this with your suspension in it, but it's going to be very, very unsecure and very unstable. This is not a machine that is designed to keep your suspension in your vehicle. Uh, like I said, I did it with the 1962 Galaxy, and that was the, when I first bought the machine, and it worked okay, but let me tell you what. I'm actually thanking God that the machine didn't tip over. Remember that? Yep. All right. It was, a it was very, car. it was a very, very dangerous deal for me to put it on the rotisserie so I could fix some rust on the bottom of the car without taking the front and rear suspension off. So be careful with that. So now I got to bring this hole right here up to this hole here, and then the uh, rotisserie will be set up once I get my bolt in there. like that where's our big bolt at and you can always tell on these which side goes where because the washer fits inside just like that and this is actually a, a nice operation here because this washer look how thick that washer is you can see it's the same thickness as this it keeps it from slopping around and then we'll go ahead and tighten this up and I will come back and tighten this Okay, so our rotisserie is now hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the suspension out, and then we'll be able to flip-flop this any way we want. 
to actually work on it. The main thing that you got to worry about when you're hooking up your rotisserie is making these brackets to fit on your particular car. It's very important. Every car that you put on a rotisserie has to have its own bracketry system to work. Let's go look at this crap out here that we had to use on the old Willie's Jeep. So the next time you plan on thinking that you're going to do a rotisserie restoration, always remember you saw my video first on how to use that rotisserie and make it work properly. Here's all the bracket shit that we made for our 1952 Willie's Jeep that we had. Do you remember that, that red one? I do, I do. And, I mean, it looks stupid, and it looks like it's, you know, like out of whack, and it looks like redneck action, but believe me or not, this was actually how we had to set it up to make it work, and it worked perfect and, and worked awesome. Let's see if we can get this thing to move. I got that rear end over there. But we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we got to get this thing in back in line, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen this and kind of jiggle it so it'll pop it back in line. Um, always remember when you're using a rotisserie and you flip your car over, lock these down. Not just one of them, both of them. Am I right, Minnie? Oh, yeah. When you hook your rotisserie up, you need to put that tie bar. It goes from front to back. It's a three-piece section. You got your... End section here. Maybe you get up under there. You got a middle section in the center, and then you got another end section. They all tie together, and that's what holds your two ends, front and back, together to secure it. So when you flip your car around, the thing's not going to come apart. has been sitting outside for a long time so here we go um, usually when you have your suspension out and everything's tied right it should flip very easily with these and you can see here we go right here look at that okay. that like this so this is Pete my friend Pete your friend Pete we got this baby all hooked up you see the rotisserie working it's a done deal. I'm going to go ahead and lock this down right here because I have to get that rear end out of there and then once we get that done it should be downhill on this rust bucket that we call nightmare. Anytime you have to put a car on a rotisserie, it's a nightmare. Come on over here. Always make sure to lock down every time you get done. Lock that down tight. And we are now actually ready for rust repair. Ready for rust repair. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Stand back over here so you can get the car. Hooking up the rotisserie and showing you how it's done and what it's actually for. This is a machine that you would use to repair rust on the bottom of your car and actually restore the bottom of your car so you're in comfortable position and you're doing your work at an excellent rate and uh, not doing everything upside down, you might say. This is actually better to use than a lift when you're doing this kind of work. This is an expensive machine. I believe this one here cost $1,500 when I bought it. I don't know. We gotta go, take it easy. That's your rotisserie, and that is how it's done. <laughs>